Cancer Singles, welcome. It's the mid-December. Meet your soulmate read. This is an always positive read, I say, because it's asking simply, who is the right one for you, Cancer? And I'm only wanting to describe them. Go. Uh, so I see this as being a purely predictive read. It's not going to be someone that you know. This is for someone that's completely single, totally single. And I see this as kind of opening up this, you know, opportunity for this new energy to come into your life, okay? And so that's the position you're in. Um, but this, we're going to see now, is your person. I can, we'll, we'll get some astrology, so hopefully, you know, you can get the date of birth uh, now pretty easily. Most of that will come in just from the date, uh, maybe the moon, I don't know, which is in Virgo here. Um, <clears throat> so here I look at the emotional aspects of your person. Here, we can call them a soulmate. I think there's more than one, but this would be the one right now whose spirit has uh, in the quiver, as it were, to best suit you uh, spiritually. And me would best suit them, be my belief there, no? So here, intellectually, we look here with two cards. Here we look at the third column is uh, sexual and love nature. Here, core values and lifestyle energy. But I really like to focus and start with the emotional, fourth house kind of guy. Um, and, you know, you often see people with difficult childhoods. This, guy, this had working mothers all over it, you know. So this person had a working mother. Um, there's five of cups to me. It, it either they emotionally were just shut out in childhood. Maybe they had siblings, but somehow didn't fit in. It's not. It's it's not being seen, not being heard as a child. And um, being a lost child could be a middle child. They have siblings older and younger younger than them. Um, but the, a sense of uh, being lost here in this Virgo moon. And a Virgo moon, you know, can be a harsh taskmaster. It's what we need to feel secure and safe. And kind of what a Virgo moon uh, needs is for just everything to be right, <laughs> you know. Even if, damn it, they have to do it themselves, you know. Because they really can't stand things to, to not be right. So, um, you know, it's hard for them if there's a lot of problems. Because with a Virgo moon, you can't just kick back usually. I see you can. I know you can, other things come in, but or you just learn, but... It's hard not to go, okay, I got to fix that. I just can't let, let it be all broke out there, meaning it can be other people or, you know, uh, that kind of thing. <clears throat> um, so they're dealing with that with the Gemini sun. Um, both of these are Mercury, the planet Mercury. So now the planet Mercury becomes very important, I think, for them. Um, and I really think they probably have a Gemini Mercury, which, of course, not uncommon. Have Mercury close to the sun like it is, and it would be right there. So uh, I often see the Three of Cups as a Mercury energy, third house energy, Gemini energy, frankly. Um, which uh, many cancers, you will share that in your personal planets, could well right, be. Um, so you have a, someone's going to have a really a Gemini personality. A really good mind, I would be really surprised if this person um, is not a, a teacher of some kind, perhaps maybe even a professor. I mean, this person um, has the ability to learn, to focus. This is uh, Eight of Pentacles is great, you know. Um, when I say they want it done right, like, well, if they're just sitting writing a paper for their doctorate, Okay, that, they're all about that. They can tear that shit up. They don't need like Adderall even probably, right? Um, and now with the Gemini sun and the Gemini um, also Mercury here coming in. Um, so right now, um, I think this is someone too. Um, they are fairly stable in their emotions. Another thing with the Virgo moon it, if, there's, if they are upset emotionally, they like to identify it and basically like deal with it in some practical way. Um, it can run the gamut from uh, take milk of magnesia to kill a bitch. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, uh, you, you, it's hard energy to just uh, uh, sit in and, uh, when things are not right. Um, and so um, they probably would be someone who is very good with details and with learning. And very possibly with teaching here. 
from Cancun, Mexico. He's seeing agua for sale, which we just got some yesterday. So the gracias. He carries up two flights of chair uh, stairs. So God bless him, you know, by the tip. But because I couldn't do it anymore, I don't know what to do. I just boil this water and drink it. <laughs> but anyway, so here we are with your person, uh, Cancer. Uh, and I'm looking here at the Venus uh, energy here. And I'm thinking of Taurus Venus for this high priestess, you know. And Mars is here in air. And it's kind of like debilitated. Um... could have uh, um, yeah it probably gonna have to be a Gemini Mars too um, it's kind of not good there it's jumping around it's like this person could be one of those people that's an incredible multitasker you know um, with Mars and Gemini and it does it it, it is still um, Bringing in more, uh, because it's in Gemini now, bringing in uh, more energy for Mercury to the Mars. Uh, making the way that this person wants to act, uh, being uh, more about their words. Their, it could be a writer, this person too, right? With this uh, Venus here, I think the Venus is already is exalted in Taurus. So in some manner, their Venus also by aspect would be in a relatively harmonious aspect uh, particularly maybe moon and, and the uh, any of the angles or something um tr you know trying or sextile there uh, you may see particularly though i think the mars a little troubled and um they so i think they would really um be, be drawn to channel their energy into some field of communicating learning uh, writing, disseminating information, this kind of thing. And, and I'm thinking, guys, potentially, like, at a very high level, uh, they're not writing, like, uh, textbooks for hacks, you know, uh, or something. Um, and so, I don't know, uh, think along those lines, you know, um, someone with a career considered, I mean, like, you know, we have an adult here, someone, you know, uh, 30-ish, so uh, Saturn return ages are, more, are older. Okay, um, <clears throat> so in terms of love, it's like um, they'll be kind of possessive, and but uh, not really. I think uh, the Taurus can be that way. Um, it's uh, it it's more when when Taurus and Venus, they're more almost concerned about your body. Yeah. So and you know, and it might not mean like oh that you have to have this great body. It's no, it's quite literal. It's like they they mostly you could be off like. I don't know doing what they're fucking somebody in your head. They don't really care as long as your body's right there next to them near them It's almost like a proximity thing. I mean it is a proximity thing. It's so uh, physical and Taurus um, right uh, in uh, then with the Gemini Mars so uh, Sexually you could be someone that's um, kind of a submissive um, Not uh, a fiery lover um, and they need, I think, like, I, I, I can say this, I'm, I'm not saying they're perfect, I'm not saying anything wrong with this, I think there's someone that kind of needs a little uh, encouragement, too, you know, obviously, you don't want it to any love or see anything, like, negative, but, you know, around, Mars is sex, you know, let's be real, so, but this person particularly, you would not want to do that, you know, and they just may need to kind of know um, that they're valued, I mean, you look, you know, you have the five of uh, cups here, and you have the five of swords and this is being the in some manner the neglected child the middle child the lost child you know maybe there was only a mom this really screams working mom eight of pentacles and five of cups you know and where does that leave them well there they are right there forget all the castle or river bullshit that's there you go it just shows them right there but now so here they are they're older now it's in their head it's not these are emotions here and so, which, what did Gemini do? It's all Mercury and a Virgo. They're going to get in their head with their feelings. So, keep that in mind in terms of, like, how it comes to the bedroom. And, again, how sensitive they are. They might like, you know, talk in some manner. Um, dirty talk, sexy talk, maybe romantic talk. But, 
something like that. Um, I know with Virgos that the moon is strong too. They, they really like instructions. I'll leave that in mind. And like really positive. Never like, oh my God, don't do that. But like, oh my God, I really like that. And they typically will pay attention here. Again, this is a learner. It's like a learning, learning module here. It's like they came down here to Earth prepared for like to absorb information and redistribute it. This is what, like breathing in and out to them information, right? So maybe think of that. Yeah, it's all kind of going into that Mars. So now in terms of their career and um, look at lifestyle here too, um, I'm thinking it's going to be pretty wide open. In terms, I don't think they're still going to have a real strong opinion about what exactly their house is like or or, or whatever. Um, I see someone here with the magician that um, when they apply themselves, I think they have a great mind, they can kind of make things happen. I mean, they're, you could say they're a master manifester, and they may not be going around practicing quote-unquote manifestation, as I talk about here. You know, it's not a, a, you know, a, a thing for them, perhaps, but if you just look at them, it's what they do. I'll start with this Eight of Pentacles, one of the best cards in the deck up here, Eight of Pentacles. You know, they, they have to uh, perform. They have to work, do a good job, at whatever they do. Um, and that builds good karma over time, too, wouldn't you think, right? Just always feeling and then being compelled to do your best job. Um, and so any Virgo energy around that, and here you have Mercury, and it still comes in. These people typically make great uh, workers, you know. Uh, you know, um, so, yeah, in terms of love, be kind of uh, grounding, um, very sensual. Um, even if it's a man, they might really appreciate, like, you know, the ambiance a little bit. So if you appreciate that, they might. Um, so, um, but in any case, very sensual, slow. Think uh, Eric Clapton singing clo slow hand, maybe. Um, and then with this, it's... Um, they. They do, they probably do, I see writer a lot. I mean, this is someone that kind of lives by their wits here in this position. This is lifestyle core values. They may experience like, uh, you know, uh, windfalls and depressions and money. They may cyclical in their earnings, possibly highly, like they publish a book and they're uh, rich for a year or two or five and then, it's a little bit of a struggle, and then boom, and so a cycle in terms of their work life. And I think it's around, and it may also find that in terms of may involve creativity, what they do, whatever it is, right? So that's a little cyclical, like they're up and they're engaged, they're doing it, and then they're down, and it takes, maybe it takes it out of them. Um, boy, that's something we can look at the astrology chart, try to get some kind of guidance on how to kind of get that get in sync with that energy so it's not so dramatic and uh you know um energy for people you know up and down kind of energy in your uh, career um but this would be the kind of person you know be uh, self-taught they could might have also have some kind of degrees but they're autodidactic here it's kind of person here they're always learning a little bit like a brain like a processor here always uh, learning and you know uh, wanting to being very curious to uh, always uh, you know not uh, wanting to spend too much time on one little thing but to see everything and all the details and connect things and ask questions and kind of very fast they probably speak very fast too so like opposite of me they yeah probably uh, very engaging, I think, you know, and aware. So they, as you talk to them, you're feeling like they're really there. They're really smart. They really get me. They maybe they can get everything. Um, they're maybe a little witty, a little funny, friendly, really friendly, really disarming kind of energy. Gemini at its best, you know. I'm a Sag, a lot of Gemini energy in my life, and it's opposite, and I always enjoy it. Uh, um, but it's been personal um, for me. So um, this kind of person you're getting here, uh, Cancer. So let me know if you uh, see this person out and about. It could be any time, I think, after you see this reading. It's mid-December, so leave it a little open for the time frame. You know, we're talking about energies from the other side. There's no time. So uh, this is something that I think, though, that would be coming, that would be on the astral tray, as I say, already manifested, but moving towards the 3D, towards you. And uh, this would be the person here. But let me know if you run into them.
Thank you, cancers.